Good morning, treasure finders. This is my last day on Sanibel. I'm so sad. Excuse my voice. I'm a little nasally. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm just powering through today and I'm going to sound nasally anyway because I'm from the Midwest, right? I came out here today for a special mission. I connected on Facebook. I follow a couple of Sanibel Island pages. And there was a lady who reached out and said that her husband lost his wedding ring. And I thought, oh, I have a metal detector. Maybe I can help out. So I messaged her and we went back and forth and I got all the information from her about where her husband lost his wedding ring. Unfortunately, he lost it in the water and that was about four days ago. So it's not quite a needle in a haystack, but I don't know that I have a lot of chances to find this ring. It would be super cool if if I could find it, but I just thought I would give it a shot. I'll check, you know, the water in the sand. One caveat, I don't know exactly if I'm allowed to metal detect in the water on Sanibel. I don't know. I, I could get yelled at. I feel like I'm doing this for a good reason, but I'm not sure what the actual rule is. It's really different all around Florida. Some places you can metal detect in the water, some places just on the sand between the toe of the dune and the high tide mark. I'm not sure on Sanibel and I probably should have found out but like I said I've been under the weather and I just kind of wanted to get this done so hopefully I won't get in trouble with my metal detector out there I'm at the lighthouse so probably do a little shelling along the way as well because I can't resist doing that it would be so cool if I found this ring like I said I don't have super high hopes but you never know if it was meant to be it's meant to be this is going to be a little bit daunting because wow the ocean is vast and I don't know exactly where she was I think she was over by there's a buoy out there and just got my phone out right now to see where I am at this street I think I see a bunch of people coming off the road up there so I think I'm just a little bit shy of where I need to be so wish me luck Unfortunately, what happened is I went out in the water and it's just daunting. You know, I don't know exactly where he was playing. I don't know how deep he was. I don't know how far out he was. I don't know exactly where he was. So I spent about an hour. The conditions are great today to look, but I just wish I knew exactly where he was. So I'm gonna change tack and go put my stuff away and maybe do some shelling since it's such a beautiful day. I'm really sorry to the couple that lost the wedding ring. I did try. It's just, I guess it was too big of a task for this treasure finder.
that's a wrap for Sanibel, unfortunately. Today was my sixth day here and unfortunately I didn't find the ring that I was looking for but the shelling turned out to be amazing. So stay to the end and I'll show you all the treasures that I found today and thanks for coming along with me to Sanibel. I will be back for sure and next I'm heading up to Clearwater and there's a lot of shelling up there as well so thank you for watching today and thank you for subscribing to my channel and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel I would really appreciate it if you do that and give me a thumbs up and I will see you on the beach somewhere. So here is my shelling haul from day six on Sanibel. I'm going to move the camera around a little bit as I talk and let me show you what I found. As I've said in previous videos, my hands shake. I have a condition called essential tremor. So I'm going to use this little, my little pointer again to show you the shells. This whole section here are fighting conks and so many little juveniles, which you know that I love in so many different colors. This one in particular, I loved like that. So pretty. I just love the color and I love these little white ones as well. I only found these small ones. I, I did find a couple of bigger ones, but they were old crusty ones. Did find a couple of worm snails. I don't know why I like those. I just like to pick those up. Moving on over here, these are called sailor's ears. They're very fragile. They're very thin, but I just think they're kind of. I think they're kind of uh, a pretty a pretty shell if they can make it to shore without breaking. Sorry, my voice is still a little bit gravelly. I've been under the weather. Right over here are the tulips that I found. This one isn't in the best shape. This one is in really good, oh, there goes the hands. This one's in really good shape. This one right here, you saw me uncovering this one. This is a true tulip. And if they're in really good shape, they can be like really pretty colors of orange and pink. This one is very old and I gotta say, he's he, there's, there's no animal in here, but this shell smells so bad. <laughs> I have to get rid of this shell. It is broken. It's not in great shape. That was a really fun find, but he kind of stinks. Sorry, guy. Moving along, some beautiful cones here. These are Florida cones. This guy, it's hard to tell if he's a Florida cone or a dusky cone. I did find out the difference between a Florida cone and a dusky cone. Dusky cones are typically smaller and they have bridges that come across this way horizontally. It's hard to tell because he's kind of washed smooth so it might be a florida cone i did pick up this hair whelk. these are extremely fragile and this guy is broken a little bit uh the tip is kind of broken off and he's broken up there just a little bit he's not in bad shape but hair whelks are really fun to find and i have found a lot of them on sandoval but this was the first one the only one i've seen on this particular trip so moving over here, this is a kind of a worn, real worn out king's crown. And here is a really little baby king's crown. I, I have found only one of these, maybe two on Sanibel that have been maybe this size or a little bit bigger in really good shape. And I love those shells. I think they're so beautiful. So I picked up this old guy anyway. Here is a beautiful angel's wing. It is a little bit broken, but I just wanted to show you what an angel's wing is. Funny, I found a lot of these when I was down in Texas and I'll link a video to one of my Texas shelling videos here. These were all over the beach in Texas and surprisingly not broken. I found so many of them down there in huge, like that big. This one will probably go back to the beach as well since it's broken, but I just wanted to show you what that was. Moving on here, this is a little serif. I didn't pick up very many of these. I actually didn't see that many, but I wasn't focusing on these, so I didn't pick one up. Here was a bubble, and at the lighthouse, there's so many bubbles right now. They're just, they're absolutely everywhere. This right here is, I believe, a Florida rock snail, and I don't think they're that common. And here are a couple of moon snails or shark eyes. This I think is called a button, a button snail or a button shell. Anybody knows for sure. Here's some chestnut turbans. I love this one is really orange. I love it when they're orange like this. It's really pretty. Of course, I always pick up pinks and oranges in the scallops because I love those. This is a, I'm going to try not to shake here. This is a wentel trap, but it's broken. 
I just wanted to show you what that is. Very distinct. I did find quite a few of these in Texas and I'll link that video here if you want to see the, win <laughs> the winter traps that I found in Texas. Over here are some nutmegs. This one has a little bit of a hole in it and actually when I found this one I thought it might be a scotch bonnet. Um, sometimes they sort of look similar. They're not exactly the same but I think nutmegs are really a cool looking shell. And this is a really nice one here. I did find a lace murex this time. These are a little bit different from the apple murex which are right here. So these are fun to find. It has a little bit of um, barnacle on it which I can get off if I'm so inclined to do so. Here's all of these apple murexes. So I have a little bit of a mystery shell here and I may have put the mystery together. I found a bunch of these little juveniles and now I'm not even sure if these are the same. So what do you think about these? Do you think that these are juvenile apple murex? I think I found one of these also in a previous video. So this one looks a little different than this one here, doesn't it? I think this might be a juvenile apple murex, but this I think might be something different. And I think I found one of these in a previous video and didn't know what it was either. So I would love for you to weigh in on what you think this is a juvenile of, because I can't figure that one out. In the middle here are some, some olives. They're in pretty good shape. This one's not in the best shape. And this one I actually didn't even find down at the lighthouse. I just wanted to show it to you. I found this on Captiva. This is it's such a beautiful olive. It's, it's very highly polished and it just looks beautiful. I just found this really bright in the middle of the beach, not even in a rack line or anything. So I don't know if it just nobody ever found it or if some, it dropped out of someone's shell bag. But I just wanted to show you that because I thought it was really pretty. So that is my final day's haul, shelling on Sanibel. And my husband and I are headed north to the Clearwater area. So I will be doing a bunch of shelling up there at Honeymoon Island State Park and some other places that I found up there. And so I will see you on the beach somewhere.